Maazi Nam de Kanu, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra IPOB, is currently being tortured in the DSS detention in Abuja by various means, including starvation, so reveals his lawyer. Welcome to our channel. We bring you global happenings and breaking news. We encourage you to kindly subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so that our video uploads will come directly to you. Let us tell you what is happening in the DSS detention where Nam the Kano is being held. Please listen till the end to hear all sides of this story. Let's go. The indigenous people of Phi PUB lawyer Ifan Yejiofo has alleged that the detained leader of IPOB, Mazin Nam de Kanu, in the Department of State Services, DSS, was not allowed to eat more than once a day. Wow. So this is starvation. Forced fasting once a day. A whole DSS, a federal government establishment, cannot feed one prisoner three times a day. Not even a prisoner, but a detainee. How much does it cost to feed the Nam the Kanu? If they cannot feed him, they should ask his people to bring food for him. Or they take him to a normal prison where he is allowed to receive uh, food from outsiders. If this is true, this is more than too much. Mental torture, starvation also. Because all this uh, add up to why a lot of young people are angry. And when they read this kind of report from the lawyer of the detained um, Mazen and the Kanu, they are simply too angry that this could be happening to their leader. Okay, let's uh, continue to see what uh, Jeffrey is saying. He disclosed this to newsmen in you know, worry on Friday after they visited the Kanwa DSS detention facility in Abuja last Thursday. Ejiofo said it was part of the complaint by Kanu during the interaction. Ejiofo added that Kanu's case was getting worse due to the refusal of DSS to allow the IPOB leader to change his clothes despite repeated court orders to do so. This one really baffles me. What is what is the big deal in somebody changing a cloth? Nigeria also put themselves sometimes in a public relations mess. How can you detain somebody, somebody that has such a huge profile and the whole world is looking at his trial and many Nigerians are watching this? And he has appeared in court several times with one cloth he was arrested with for over nine months. In what country do they do this? What is the problem in uh, changing, giving him cloth? Is it the cost? Is it, what is it? The other time they gave a reason. They said he is going to wear Ishiago, which is Igbo local attire, and is intimidating, is against their principles and policies and blah, blah, blah. What policy, what principle? Now somebody wears his native cloth, what does he do? I have seen a show who is also detained on such circumstances come to court, even with a, a native doctor's appearance, and they didn't intimidate anybody. Just cloth. Cloth. The Nigerian system is intimidated by cloth. The DSS, with all their armory and their sophisticated intelligence gathering equipment, they are bothering about a cloth somebody wears. There's something really wrong in all this. According to the IPOB's lawyer, in line with court order guideline, we conducted the routine visit to our indefatigable client, Onion Duma as in the Canada the DSS headquarters today. Pertinent concerns on legal matters of engaging urgency were frankly discussed with Onion Du, and the outcomes were fruitful. Onyendu's continued use of the same clothing is increasingly worrisome as the DSS personnel have blatantly denied him change of clothing 
in their usual fragrant disobedience of court orders. Recall that at the last adjourned date, being the 8th of, 8th day of April 2022, this issue was raised and the judge ordered that Onyendu's clause should be taken along by the DSS after the proceedings and should be promptly handed over to him upon their return to the DSS facility. Unfortunately, it is utterly disheartening to note that up till the time of our visit today, Onyendu is, has not been able to use those clothes, have not been handed those clothes for a change. Despite learning and on a vocal directive from his lordship to the DSS lawyer, to ensure that the court order is obeyed, the DSS in their usual style roundly ignored and treated it with most disdain as they are yet to comply with this recurrent court order requiring Onyendu's change of clothing. He also alleged that we were also reliably informed by Onyendu that his meals are no longer served regularly. Onyendu barely eats once in a day and this situation is not helping his deteriorating medical condition. The lawless DSS personnel have remained adamant and adamant with how they treat court orders with levity and disdain, which is unacceptable as no one is above the law anywhere in the world. Be assured that we in the legal team are not resting on our oars towards ensuring that these infractions addressed with immediate effect. Consistent with his nature of gratitude, Onyendu thanks you all, millions of his supporters and Ezebo Muchineke for relentlessly standing tall. It is not taken for granted by Onyendu. Also, Onyendu specifically requested that I inform you all that you are in his prayers always too. Above all, he requests that you should all be assured that he will end in victory in no distant time, IPO's, IPOB lawyer said. It will end in victory. He is in high spirits, but this continues to go on. This total disregard for the law by the Directorate of State Services, a country that does not follow the rule of law. A government instance ordered by a court and they cannot obey that. This is a pity. It's totally a pity and very regrettable. How can a government not obey its own court? This is anarchy. Anarchy, total anarchy. That's the best way to describe it. I wonder how this man is able to withstand all this pressure. Well, that's all we have on this. Can you go to the comment section, please, and tell us what you think about this thing going on between 